are spending our second day in Hanoi by doing a bit of sightseeing despite the rain. We have come to Nok Son Temple. I'm sure I'm butchering the pronunciation of Vietnamese, but this is kind of one of the main attractions in the city. The entry price was 30,000 dong per person, which puts this at under two bucks for each of us. is absolutely stunning however it is still limited floor space and when we went inside then there were so many signs saying no cameras please so with that then we couldn't really take any photos or video but we will definitely talk you through a little bit more about the temple itself and the culture surrounding it Yesterday when we were on the tour, we learned a lot about Vietnamese culture as well as temples. And what we learned was on full display here at Nok San Temple. Bear with me while I try and explain it all as it's quite intertwined. So I think I should start off about family culture here and how it's still very traditional. You can have five generations ranging from a great-grandparent all the way down to a great-grandchild living in the same house. And it does still typically fall on the eldest son to provide for the family and take care of parents as they get older. So their family ties and bond are very strong. Yeah, in the same way when somebody passes on them, they never truly believe that that person is gone they believe that they've just passed on to a different plane of existence. So with that then, they still feel like they can connect to their ancestors by coming to temples like this. So because they believe that their ancestor's spirit lives on, as Nick said, they want to remember them and honor them. And so they come to temples like this and make offerings. The offerings I find to be quite humorous in that they can be beer, water bottles, biscuits, fruit, tea in a bottle, like a brand name Fanta, for example. And what does the temple do with these offerings? They do not donate them to the poor or give them to an orphanage. The ancestors come here, drop off the offerings, leave them for about a week. They believe that their ancestors bless these offerings and then they come back, collect them, and bring them back to their family because they now believe that they are blessed and will bring their family blessings when they consume them. I'm not sure if you've been able to see, but this temple actually sits on a stunning lake and the next part of the city that we're planning on going to will take us on a bit of a walk around it. So we're going to enjoy that now. upon a time it is so said that in the third century in order to defeat invading armies then a giant turtle from this lake gave one of its claws so it could be fashioned into a sword to be given to the king to protect the people many many centuries later when the vietnamese king defeated the chinese he was boating on this lake and encountered a turtle who then took the sword back. 
that was intended as a symbolic gesture because this sword was no longer needed then this symbolized that the Vietnamese people were then free from tyranny and the rule of others. Obviously that didn't quite shake out but you know it's nice to have the story and because of this legend then this area has a lot of turtle themed names not least the lake. It is actually worth noting that it's not just mythical turtles who once lived here there were actual sword lake turtles that have since dwindled in numbers because apparently they are delicious to eat but there are still a few that exist and live on still today. I think it said that there were only six of them left but from the looks of the photos and things like that within the temple then they're beautiful. And just so you know in Vietnamese culture turtles symbolize longevity. Clearly great significance to the Vietnamese people and I mean we love turtles too so they're pretty significant to us. They are definitely magical to see when snorkeling up close. Absolutely. Right we now move on to the next place. area which was clear because there are designer stores all around to get to what is the opera house here in Hanoi. The opera house was built by the French between 1901 and 1911 and as it turns out France colonized Vietnam in 1887 and they actually ruled over this country until 1954. And it's interesting as well because these shows and performances that were put on here really align with either who was in power or who Vietnam was in talks with at that point. So during French rule, then the main things that were put on here were operas in French and Italian for predominantly French speaking audiences. But when Vietnam then gained independence and was more in talks with the USSR, then that's when you started seeing more performances that were Russian speaking instead. So definitely a reflection of the times by way of its culture. What we are standing in right now is actually a site that we visited on our walking tour yesterday, which is the Old City Gate. Back in the 11th century, there was a citadel that was built in order to help repel invaders and protect the city of Hanoi. That has undergone reconstruction many times, but due to more recent wars, which have seen bombing and a lot of devastation to a lot of the ancient parts of the city, this old city gate is actually the last remaining part of that citadel. We are now headed back to Don Juan Market, which we also visited yesterday on the walking tour. I didn't feel like we got quite enough time to explore all the different vendors there. It is three stories, so there's a lot to check out, and I can't wait to see it in its full. The French administration also built this market in 1899. However, it has been renovated a number of times due to damage from war and fire. Salted cream, condensed milk, and obviously coffee. It 
it's absolutely lovely. While obviously it's not quite the same as like salted caramel, then the cream and the condensed milk kind of step in and replace that flavor and it just brings out a new level of sweetness. Really good. Same bow. Different day. We've come to Hanoi's famous train street and the reason that this place is so popular with tourists is because the train tracks run right down the center of the street but there's only about two maximum of three feet in between the train tracks and the houses and businesses on either side. There's an intersection where the railway crosses the road and at that point there are a bunch of cafe and restaurant owners who are trying to coax you in to get a spot on the train street so you can watch trains coming by. With that then you approach somebody who then takes you to their cafe and really the deal is that provided that you buy a drink or food or whatever then you can stay there for as long as you want to and watch the trains come past whenever they do. You can easily find the train schedule online. I don't want to say what it is just in case it changes but just know that we are going to be here for the 3.30 p.m. train but again do your own research and just also note that you're not allowed to walk on the train tracks yourself. At the intersection Nick was talking about where the train tracks cross the main road, there are police and barricades there, making sure that you do not go onto the train tracks. So you might as well not even think about sneaking on. Really the only way to do this is to sit in one of the cafes, bars, restaurants, and enjoy the train passing by from a few feet away. With that then we just order ourselves a couple of coconut coffees and we're going to enjoy them up until the train passes. interesting both in a good way and in a weird way because we were sat there we were enjoying our coffee and having a lovely chat with this couple from Nova Scotia that we just happened across and then all of a sudden the train came we took our footage our photos all of that kind of stuff and then the next thing you know we're immediately getting pretty much evacuated away from the cafe being told to pay up and get out because the police had come so a little bit weird, not sure as to what the hurry was really, but all the same, a really cool collector's item and certainly a once in a lifetime experience. We're going to head back to our hostel now, do a little bit of work, and then I think we're going to head out for dinner and hopefully try even more Vietnamese food because we're loving it. Yeah, we are. mention the word pho, one would immediately think of a noodle soup because that's generally what has managed to make it out of Vietnam over to other countries. However, it would appear that there is more than one type of pho and the one that we are trying now is called pho jiao which is a stir-fried version so it's completely soupless. We've come to a local spot which is just a stone's throw away from our hostel to try this, it smells wonderful and we cannot wait to dig in. That's really, really good. Very, like it's super simple, but it's just very well seasoned. It's got some soy in there. Just a beautiful set of noodles with beef and some vegetables. Can't go wrong. So how was it? I don't typically like soupy dishes. I find ramen okay. And what was the one that we tried in Thailand? How soy? Same with cow soy. I love the flavor, but I don't love the soupiness. So finding something that's different than the classic pho, which is also soupy, suited me perfectly. 
I love the stir fry. Well, that was a wonderful way to cap off what's been a really fun day. I was just so impressed by the operation they have going on the side of the street. And I really liked how it was a very healthy meal. It was beef as protein, noodles as carbs, and healthy greens in the form of bok choy. Just so simple, but so delicious. And we will look forward to trying even more Vietnamese food tomorrow and checking out even more sites to Hanoi. Hanoi is an embarrassment of riches. On every front, and we're loving it so far. And we cannot wait to get on with tomorrow. But until next time, take care. And keep smiling.